welcome everybody to the lecture number 3 on chemical kinetics. So, again a brief recap of uh, you know what we were doing in last class was that especially during the latter part of the class we entered into this uh, rate of a chemical reaction and we were saying that this rate of a chemical reaction means that we are following how the reaction is progressing as a function of time. And now to follow this we can either look at the change in the concentration of the reactants or the change in concentration of uh, the products. And we use certain techniques, certain analytical techniques right, it can be you know pH change, it can be color changes, you know, it can be a change in pressure, it can be change in conductivity. There are many ways by which you can monitor a reaction or the progress of a reaction. And again the progress of the reaction can be monitored either by looking at the change in the concentration of the reactants or the change in the concentration of the products or both. Okay. Now, <coughs> there was also a very important point that uh, we made. The point was that you know reactions are temperature dependent, right. So, if you are not interested in the temperature dependence of that reaction, then you please make sure that the reaction you are performing is being done at a constant temperature. That means, you are maintaining the temperature which we typically call as isothermal conditions and then you go ahead and do the reaction provided the temperature dependence is not your goal. However, it is obvious that if you really want to measure the temperature dependence of the reaction rate, then you have no other option but to allow the change in temperature to happen so that you can get the temperature dependence. Okay. So, then after that you know having you know said all these what it did was we moved on to a reaction and the reaction is as it is uh, given out here I will not write it again. So, the reaction is uh, that of hypochloride ion with bromide giving hyperbromide and chloride. All of these are in the equals phase that is a homogeneous reaction taking place in the same phase. Okay. So, we say that this is an example of a homogeneous reaction. Okay. That means, the reactants are in the same phase and so are the products. Okay. As again I mentioned a few minutes ago, the kinetics of this reaction are being studied at a fixed temperature of 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. That is again you are maintaining isothermal conditions. Okay. Good. Then we had just started to draw a reaction profile. Now, what does this reaction profile mean? This is a kinetic reaction profile. The kinetic reaction profile is a plot. Is a plot of what? It's a it's a plot of the change in the concentrations of your reactants and or products as a function of time. So let's go back and take a closer look at the plot. So, on the x axis you have time in seconds that means, the time is increasing in this direction. Okay. So, the time is increasing in this direction and on the y axis you have the concentration which we are expressing in moles per liter or molarity and the concentration is also increasing in this direction. Okay. So, that means, along the y axis you start from 0 and then the concentration is increasing along the x axis again you start from 0 and the time is increasing in this direction. Now, what do you see out here? What have we plotted? First, if you look at this two blue lines, see the first blue line corresponds to the concentration change of hypochlorite. The second blue line corresponds to the concentration change of bromide. right? And what about the green line? The green line corresponds to the concentration change of hypobromide and Cl minus. That means, either you are looking at hyperbromide that is bromide uh, that is BrO minus or Cl minus and both of them change exactly in the same way. That means, if you are looking at BrO minus only the hyperbromide it will follow this line green line. Again it will if you look at Cl minus separately it will follow exactly the same line. That means, these two are superimposable on each other, they are identical. Okay. 
that means the change in concentration of the products with time is identical that is why you have only one curve, one green line. Let us think about this a little more deeply about this plot. So, when you look at these circles, when you look at these circles, all these circles out here, you know these circles. So, these circles on all the three lines, the two blue lines and the green line, these circles are your experimental time points, which means that suppose if you consider this line of you know three circles, this one say corresponds to T 1, then this corresponds to T 2, this corresponds to T 3, this corresponds to T 4, this corresponds to T 5. So, what does it mean? What it means is, now suppose you look at T 1. So, let us focus on T 1. At T 1, you have one circle on the green line, which is that of the products. Then you have another circle on the line signifying the concentration change of V r minus. Then you have another circle exactly at the same time point on the line signifying the change in hyperchloride, which means, which means that at T 1, at T 1, you have measured the concentration of all the species which are hypochlorite, this one, then bromide, which is this one, and the hypobromite or C L minus, which is this circle. So, at T 1, you have these three circles. So, to repeat, at this time point T 1 in seconds, you have made measurements with respect to what? You have made measurements to res with respect to what is the concentration of hypochlorite, which is given by this one. Then, what is the concentration of bromide at T 1, which is given by this one. And then, what is the concentration of hypobromide or C L minus, which is given by this circle on the green line. Now, similarly, what you are doing is, because it is a kinetic plot, that means you are looking at the reaction as a function of time. So, you do not stick to just one time point, which means that you have to go and collect you know, or do your experiments at other time points too. So, then what you do is, you go ahead and say that, okay, let me take another time point T 2. At this time point T 2, say at this time point T 2, what I do is, I again make these measurements. So, I see I get another blue circle for this bromide, right? then this green circle for this the hyperbromide or chloride and then another circle for this CLO minus. Again, all these three circles if you see are falling right at T 2. That means, at T 2 you have made measurements of concentrations of all these species. right? So, likewise what you do is you collect more time points that means, you go to T 3, T 4, T 5 and that is why according to the time points you will see that especially on this plot you have three circles according to each time point. So, in a nutshell what you have done is you have followed the reaction. How? You have followed the reaction by looking at the change in concentration of bromide, looking at the change in concentration of hypochlorite and also looking at the change in concentration of hypobromide and C L minus. And because hypobromide and C L minus give you exactly the same change, that is why you do not see two different curves. You have one curve, which both of which are rather, which signifies that both B R O minus and C L minus, they are following the same trend. Okay, good. Now, <coughs> before I proceed further, I would also like to make one more point. The point is, see these circles, which we were just talking about at length, these circles are your experimental points. Experimental point means that at T 1, at T 1, right, you have measured the concentration say of hypobromide or C L minus. Then at T 1, you have measured the concentration of this is bromide and at T 1, you have measured the concentration of hypochlorite. Like this, you do the same thing at T 2, T 3, T 4 and T 5. Now, what I was trying to say was that you should understand that the, these points all the circle all the points all the circles are your experimental data points right so the experimental data points if i can make the you know comment right now the 
the circles seen on the plot are experimental data points. So, that means at every time point say t 1, t 2, t 3, t 4, t 5 in seconds since the start of the reaction, you have measured the concentrations. So, you have measured the concentration of say B r minus, you have measured the concentration of C l o minus, then you have measured the concentration of B r o minus, you have also measured the concentration of C l minus. Again, when you go to T 2, you repeat. So, that means, again you at T 2, you measure the concentration of B r minus, you measure the concentration of C l o minus, you measure the concentration of B r o minus, you measure the concentration of C l minus and then you repeat okay, at the other time points. Having done this, what you have now is that at each and every time point, you know exactly based on your experimentation or based on your experimental results, what the concentrations are of your products and also of your reactants. If you are looking at this you know time point, then one thing I should mention out here is this 0. What is 0? This T 0 we say or this 0 point, if I if you consider this to be my 0 point, this 0 point is often referred to the time 0. The time 0 is essentially just at or before the start of your reaction, which means that you have set your watch right, or your experimental time. Now, what you are doing is you are saying that 0 time is the time just before the reaction is starting right. At that instant, it is 0 just before the reaction is starting and then you see you allow your clock to run whatever you know means of recording the time you have. So, then once I have 0 out here, then related to that 0, I have T 1, then I have T 2, I have T 3, I have T 4, I have T 5 and so on. So, that means your time is always in relation to a certain starting time and that starting time is your 0 time or time 0 which is this 0. It is extremely important you understand this concept that when you start looking at a reaction as a function of time, that time needs to start from somewhere and the point from where it starts is a 0 time. That means, 0 time is the time where you say that okay, this is where the reaction is just before the start and now you start your time record and you get the rest of the time values. Okay. So, that is then how you did the experiment. So, think about uh, you know think you know visualize yourself doing the experiment. So, that means, you have clocked 0, you have said okay, let the reaction start and then you have started taking these time points T 1, T 2, T 3, T 4, T 5 and e at each and every time point what you have done is you have measured the concentrations of your reactants and your products. Once you have once you have done that, then you what you got was you got this plot, you got this plots that means you got the circles, you got the circles. Once you got the circles to aid visualization, to help people and yourself visualize better, what you did was you drew smooth lines through the data points. So, always understand that first you have the experimental data points like you have out here and then what you do is you draw smooth lines through the data points so that it is easier for you to understand how the plot looks like and how the changes are taking place. I hope I have emphasized you know the nature of this plot enough that when you look at a plot like this, you would be able to figure out what the different components are of this plot and 
what they mean to you and how they appeal to you. You know, that is something always you should think about and visualize yourself doing the experiment yourself. So, let us look at uh, you know let us look at some uh, features of the plot. So, then say some features of the plot. Say feature number 1. In feature number, what you see is that the concentrations of the reactants, the concentrations of the reactants that are ClO minus and Br minus decrease with increase in time ok. Second feature concentrations of the products that are BrO minus the hyperbromide ion and Cl minus increase with increase in time. Okay. So, these are important decrease with increase in time and then increase with increase in time. Okay. So, let us go back to the plot again. If you look at this kinetic reaction profile again, which are the reactants? The reactants are the hypochlorite and bromide. So, what has happened? Pay attention. This is a zero time that is just before the start of the reaction and just at the start of the reaction and then the time has progressed as you move to the right along the x axis. Okay. Now, as you move to the right at your respective time points T 1, T 2, T 3, what you see is that say suppose at 0, at 0 time, suppose at 0 time this is the concentration of bromide and this is the concentration of hypochlorite. So, this one I can write as the concentration of hypochlorite, the initial concentration with a 0 or not as a subscript meaning initial concentration. Again here also I can write the initial concentration of bromide. Okay. So, initial concentration means that just at time 0 when no reaction has taken place these are my initial concentrations that is the concentrations of the reactants that we have started with. Now, see what happens as time progresses. As the time progresses, slowly you will see that the next point for hypochlorite comes here, the next point for bromide comes here. This is at T 1. Now, you go to T 2. This point comes at a lower concentration than this point. This point comes at a lower concentration than this point. Right? I repeat, this y axis, this y axis is where you have your concentration. When you go up along the y axis, it means there is an increase in concentration. When you are moving down the y axis, it means there is a decrease in concentration. Right? Now, follow say the trace for or the trace or the line for the hypochlorite ion. At this point, the hypochlorite ion is initial concentration. So, we write hypochlorite concentration then with the 0 at the subscript saying initial concentration. Okay. Now, we go to the next point, you see that this concentration value, this concentration value of hypochlorite is less than this one, is less than this one. right? So, which means suppose I write this one is say C 1 okay? and suppose you know this one is C 0. 
for hypochlorite. Then immediately what I can say is the concentration based on this plot what I can say is that C 1 is less than C naught right. Again just look at this I have said C 1 is less than C naught this is C 1 I am coming down along the y axis that is how my reactant you know uh, you know the concentration of my reactant is progressing as a function of time. So, C 1 is less than C naught ok. Now, suppose I go to C 2 what is C 2 let this be C 2 you know I am moving along I am moving along the line which features the change in concentration of the hypochlorite ion C L O minus. Then I can say that now C 2 is less than C 1 say this is now C 3 ok. Then again I say C 3 is less than C 2 ok. Say this is the next circle says C 4 and if I have said C 4 then I can say that C 4 is less than C 3 and likewise now you can figure out C 5 is less than C 4. So, this is C 5 I am saying C 5 is less than C 4 ok. So, what does this mean that what it means is that as I move from C 0 to C as I move from C 0 to C 1 to C 2 to C 3 to C 4 to C 5 what is happening what is happening is my concentration is decreasing along with time this is obvious is not it why is it why is it obvious it is obvious because it is a reactant because it is a reactant a reactant by definition is supposed to react and go to the product side or to the product species which means as I let the reaction go as I let the reaction go the signature of the reaction progressing that means going towards the product side is that my reactant concentration starts decreasing and that is what I am having. So, C 0 is the initial concentration of C L O minus I repeat then you go to the next time point which is T 1 you get C 1 right which at this point C 1 is less than C 0 then I go to time point T 2 where I have C 2 for C L O minus then this C 2 is less than C 1 and so on ok. So, along the time points from C 0 to C 5 C 5 is the minimum and C 0 is having the maximum value based on the plot we are looking at ok. Good. So, it means that the reaction definitely is progressing right because the concentration of C L O minus is decreasing with time. Now, having you know spent some time on the plot for C L O minus just look up B R minus which is the other reactant species ok. For B R minus you start from here. So, this is B R minus 0 which is the initial concentration of B R minus then you go to the next point right which is the concentration of B R minus at time T 1 then you go to the next point which is the concentration of B R minus at time T 2 and you go on what you see is at successive time points the concentration of bromide ion goes on decreasing. Again it makes sense because this is the reactant. So, we have double conformation what is the double conformation the double conformation is of what of the reaction progressing because both the reactants are getting lost that means they are getting used up that means the concentrations of the reactants are getting lower and lower as the time is progressing why because the reaction is happening and because the reaction is happening then more and more products are getting formed. So, last but not the least since you have already pro monitored the progress of the reactants which are decreasing it makes sense then the concentration of the products as a function of time should go the other way that means they should increase and that is exactly what you see. So, look at the green line now look at the green line look at the green line this green line either belongs to BRO minus or CL minus and I said that they are identical. So, if you look at time 0 the way the reaction was set was that at 0 time there was no formation of any product and hence the concentrations of BRO minus and CL minus start from 0. So, then another you know feature remember we were talking about the features of the plot we were talking about some features of the plot. 
then feature number 3 then feature number 3 what we can write is that at time 0 there was no product present there was no product present that is that is i can write the initial concentration of bro minus at time 0 is equal to the initial concentration of cl minus at time 0 which is equal to 0 because that is how the reaction was set and when we started the reaction there was no formation of hypobromide or formation of chloride. None of these products were present in the reaction vessel at the time you started the reaction. Okay. Then let us look at feature number 4. So, at feature number 4 you go back and again take a look at this. As we just said feature number 3 was that the products were not present out there at all at the start of the reaction. Then feature number 4 is what? You look at the initial concentrations of Br minus and Cl O minus. You see, you now you can ask yourself a, yourself a question. The question is, I said that okay, the products Br O minus and Cl minus, they are superimposable, that their kinetic traces are superimposable. That means, whether I do Br O minus or whether I do Cl minus, they will exactly follow the same data points. And that is why you have written Br O minus and Cl minus, because both of them, if you measure the concentration separately, they would lie on this line. Okay. However, the same thing does not happen for hypochlorite and hypobromide or uh, rather bromide, hypochlorite and bromide. Why is this so? It should be very evident to you. Look at the initial concentration of bromide and look at the initial concentration of hypochlorite. The way we have started with the reaction is such that the initial concentration of hypochlorite is more than the initial concentration of bromide. So, we can write here that at time 0, the concentration of hypochlorite is greater than the concentration of bromide right hence the concentration of clo minus at time 0 which is the initial concentration is greater than the initial concentration of bromide okay so, if I just have to make it a little more clear, I can say that what is C L O minus 0? This is the initial concentration of C L O minus. What is meant by B R minus with the 0 subscript at the bottom? It is the initial concentration of B R minus. So, then what was feature number 4? Feature number 4 was that I time 0 the concentrations of the species the reactants C L O minus and B R minus are not the same right and how are they not the same in this way or in this manner that the concentration of hypochlorite the initial concentration which is given by C L O minus uh, you know the 0 at the subscript it is greater than the initial concentration of bromide right so just you know quickly if you want to recap the features of the plot so what are the features the first feature was that the concentrations of the reactant species or the reactants which are hypochlorite and bromide they are decreasing with increase in time you can see for each and every blue circle each and every blue circle along the two blue lines these are belonging to the reactants as the time is progressing 
these reactants, the concentrations of these reactants are decreasing. Feature number two, the concentrations of the products that are that are the hyperbromine BrO minus and the chloride Cl minus, they increase with increase in time. So, this is aptly represented by the green curve out here. You know, on the green curve, you see these green points, right. If you start from time 0, as I said, at time 0, you have no hypobromide or chloride present. That means, there is no product species in the reaction vessel. At time T 1, you can see that this is C, this C is greater than or this concentration is greater than what you have at time 0, right, where you had no species at all, uh, product species at all. Now, you go to time T 2, you have more product formation taking place. You go to time T 3, you have again more product formation taking place. You go to time T 4, again you have more product formation taking place. You go to time T 5, okay, and based on this plot, this is where you are having the maximum product formation taking place. So, the concentrations of the reactants, they decrease as a function of time and the concentrations of products, they are increasing as a function of time. And this is typically what happens in, in any reaction or for any kinetic reaction profile, this is a general feature. Now, the next question that will come to you is, having looked at these, so we will you know always refer to this plot more and more times is. The next question you ask yourself is this. How do the concentrations change as a function of time? This is a question that you are asking based on the plots. Now, what would you see out here or what would you look at from the plot? Two things, one you were looking at the rate, right? that means the change in concentration over a time period or as a function of time. So, one is the rate of disappearance of the reactants. So, I can write the rate of disappearance of the reactants or the other way I can write is the rate of appearance of the products. So, you can express the rate of the reaction that means, what is happening to the reaction as a function of time in two ways. One is the rate of disappearance of the reactions and the other one is the rate of appearance of the products. It is the rate of disappearance that means, because the reactions are being used up that is why they are disappearing right. And then the rate of appearance because the reactants are consumed, products are being formed hence products are appearing, they are coming into existence and it is called the rate of appearance of the products because the products are formed as a function of time. Okay. So, based on this you know what we can write is. I can write say the rate of disappearance of say C L O minus is given by minus D of T or I can write in more finite terms. I will come back to you later why I change from d to delta. d means an infinitesimal thing, small change, and this big delta means a finite change over a, uh, there is a you know big change over a long term or long time interval. What I will stick to now is this one. Uh, what I will stick to now is this one. So, the delta C L O minus over delta T. Okay. Now, let us go back to our reaction profile. Suppose, I am looking at this, I am trying to you know I am trying to find out this value C L O minus over delta T. 
what is this equal to? So, I should put a negative sign out here. I will come back to this negative sign right now. Now, when I say this, when I say this, when I say a change, delta means a change over a finite time interval or a finite concentration range, right? What I am looking for is say, I look for two time points. What are the two time points? Say I look for the time point T3 and the time point T1. Then I say that my delta T, what is my delta T out here? In the denominator, I say my delta T is T3 minus T1, right? So, what I say then is I look at the plot, I look at the plot. When I look at the plot, what I say is I look at T3, okay? I look at T3 and then I look at T1. I want to say or I want to figure out then in between these two time points T3 and T1, how has the concentration of hypochlorite changed? Okay. So, then at T3, if I extend this dotted line, I hit T3, right. So, which means at T3, at T3, the concentration of hypochlorite is C3, right from this curve, right. Now, T1. So, when I go to T1, I again extend this. If you just look at the dotted lines, I hit C1, which means that if at T3 the concentration of hypochlorite was C3, then at T1 the concentration of hypochlorite, if I track along T1, it is C1. So, I write C3 minus C1. Right. Now, when I write C3 minus C1 and T3 minus T1, then you have done or you have taken a very, very important step. What is the step? The step is this C3 is less than C1, right. You see, the concentration of C3 is less than the concentration of C1, which means, which means that C3 minus C1 is a negative quantity. Why? Because C3 is less than C1. Now, if you look at T3 and T1, which are the two time points? I can say T3 is greater than T1. If T3 is greater than T1, if T3 is greater than T1, then I can say that T3 minus T1 is a positive quantity. Okay. So, T3 minus T1 is a positive quantity, C3 minus C1 is a negative quantity. Why? Because T3 is greater than C1, but C3 is less than C1. So, I bring it down a little more. So, I can have you know. So, here if I have it like this, you can see C3 and C1, C3 is less than C1, hence C3 minus C1 is negative, T3 is greater than T1. So, T3 minus T1 is positive. What has happened is this, that now you go back to this original expression that we had written and we say that this is a negative quantity over a positive quantity which gives me a negative quantity. Now, remember the quantity is negative. What is negative? What is negative is the change of the concentration of hypochlorite as a function of time. That quantity is negative. The rate of the reaction is defined to be positive. Okay? So, that is why we always go for the positive reaction rate. So, let me write it down. The rate of the reaction by definition is taken to be positive, right? Or conventionally, we say that the reaction rate is positive. So, now you go back and see what we have written out here. What we have said is that the rate of disappearance of hypochlorite is given by this delta CLO minus concentration CLO minus over delta T. That means, change of CLO minus in concentration CLO minus over the change in 
time over this time interval delta t which we have defined as t 3 minus t 1. Because if you do not consider this, because this delta C L O minus over delta t itself is a negative quantity, the rate has to be positive. Hence, what we do is to make sure we have a negative sign in front of the change. So, that is why no matter what happens, whenever you look at some kinetic profiles, you will see that the rate in terms of a reactant is always preceded by a negative sign. The negative sign indicates that this is a reactant and its concentration is decreasing as a function of time. So, let me write that. So, what I meant was that rate of disappearance, rate of disappearance of reactant is having a negative sign before the expression delta r over delta t, where r is your reactant, which you know. So, what you are doing is before this, if you are considering the rate of the reaction in terms of the rate of disappearance of the reactant, so the rate is given by the negative of this, the negative of this. So, the rate is given by the negative of this, why? Because delta r itself is negative, delta t is a positive quantity, delta r over delta t is negative and because it is negative, rate has to be positive by definition, hence we have a negative sign out there. So, I repeat, so for any reactions, if you are expressing the rate as a function of the change in concentration of the reactant, then there is always a negative sign before the change in concentration of the reactant over the time interval delta t to make sure or to make you understand that the concentration of the reactant is decreasing as a function of time. Uh, hopefully, you know from this plot, we have been able to figure out what a kinetic reaction profile is. So, if you are plotting your data points and then you know as a function of time, so data points means your concentration of your reactants and products as a function of time, so that is your reaction profile. The data points are given by these circles out here, then what you do is to for convenience sake to make it easier to understand, to make it easier to see, conceptualize, visualize, you draw smooth lines through those experimental points right to make it easy for us to understand so that we can see the trend right once you have done that then the next question you ask yourself is how does the concentration change as a function of time so what you do is then you say you look at the disappearance of chloride so the rate of the disappearance of the reactants in this case i have taken the hypochlorite is given by this minus delta c l o minus over delta t so, I can also write now that for this reaction hypochlorite plus bromide giving you bromide hypobromide plus chloride, I can write that the rate of disappearance of reactants is or can be given as this which we just saw over delta t. So, this is a negative sign this is equal to B r minus over delta t with a negative sign, because both of these are your reactants and both of these are decreasing as a function of time. That makes sense, right. So, for obvious reasons now, when you go forward and I say that okay, the rate of 
appearance of products can be expressed how I can write delta b r o minus over delta t and this is equal to delta c l minus over delta t and you see there is a positive sign before these because these by definition are positive and why is this so why why are these by definition positive you come back and take a look at this come back take a look at this right again suppose for delta t suppose for delta t we are taking t1 t3 that means t3 minus t1 and suppose you are looking at bro minus the change in concentration of bro minus so at t3 this is what the concentration of bro minus is at t1 this is what the concentration of bro minus is the concentration of bro minus at t3 is greater than the concentration of bro minus at t1 why because the products have appeared or this product has come into existence and it is increasing in concentration as a function of time hence when you go back and look at this equation when you go back and look at this equation you see this numerator is a positive quantity so is the denominator that means the whole thing is positive same for cl minus because cl minus and uh, you know hyperbromide are given by exactly the same curve and then you can say an identical statement for this one so this is also positive right so then again like for reactants the rate of reaction is expressed in terms of the negative of the change in concentration of the reactant over time for the appearance of products it is preceded with a positive sign so there is not a negative sign there is a positive sign because the change in concentration of products is positive over the time interval by definition these are products and products are coming into existence while reactants are being used up hence the for the products you have a positive sign out here for the reactants however as we saw we have a negative sign out here okay and this has to be rigorously followed maintained throughout your course on reaction kinetics or for any kinetic profile you are looking at any reaction you are looking at this is always maintained. Now before I uh, you know take uh, one more thing up I want to just uh, tell you that this is a very important set of uh, curves or plots which we will come back to later in one of the future lectures maybe uh, you know after the next lecture or maybe the next lecture itself where we will discuss something referred to as or known as average rates and instantaneous rates and we will talk about you know, these things in more detail at that time. Now I want to shift uh, gears a little bit and try to look at something which is very fundamental to chemical kinetics. What is that? Assume a certain general reaction. Take any general reaction. The general reaction goes how? See, I have this reaction going on. So, this is a chemical reaction that is going on and what I am saying in this chemical reaction is that A is my reactant, B is my second reactant, P is one product and Q is the other product. Q is the other product. Okay. What about small a, small b, small p, small q? So then a, b, p, q are what? These are the stoichiometric coefficients. These are the stoichiometric coefficients. You do not have to worry about the identity of A, the identity of B or the identity of P or the identity of Q. 
you do not have to worry about that. Neither do you have to worry about what A is, what B is, what P is or what Q is, right. The only thing you know is that the stoichiometric, the stoichiometric coefficient for reactant A is given by small a, the stoichiometric coefficient for reactant B is given by small b, the stoichiometric coefficient for the product P is given by small p and the stoichiometric coefficient of product Q is given by small q. As I said, this is a very general reaction scheme. What we will do from here is, in the next class, what we will do from here is, we will set up a certain set of equations and try, try to express the rate of reaction in terms of the disappearance of the reactants or the appearance of the products. So, that you understand how these relationships or how these expressions about the rate of a reaction given in terms of the disappearance of reactants or the appearance of products came about. Okay. So, we will in the next class, we will start from this specific general reaction scheme okay, and we will take a time to understand how the basic fundamental expressions for chemical kinetics were brought into existence. Okay. So, then that is what we are going to do in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.